Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to Sunday night for Rock the Stage Show. We are in for another fun-filled night of conversation, laughs, and a lot of information that's going to help your life and your business out tonight. And I have to give a special thanks tonight to my show wrangler, my celebrity partner, Robert Stack, who's outdone himself tonight. Because normally we have one great rock star guest. It's not just one guest. It's two guests. And it's a couple. Unbelievable. So we're going to have a lot of fun here tonight at Rock the State Show. Strap yourself in for the next 40 minutes or so. You know, for many entrepreneurs, dreaming of having their own business is an exciting thought. But then the reality often hits us. It's really hard work. Your personal life takes a hit. Often your career feels like a ball and chain, maybe. But what if you could achieve great things personally and professionally while creating an adventuresome life, a venturesome career, and it's also a healthy work balance relationship? Wouldn't that be great? Or maybe you're thinking I'm nuts and that's not possible. So I might guess what's your how it's not possible and how we're going to get deeper into that. And we are going to introduce you to the husband and wife team that makes that all possible. Dr. Travis Fox is known as the Mindset Architect, Chairman of the Ultimate Business Quest, Board Member of the BYF Incorporated, Emmy Award-winning producer, and it's all about unlocking your potential and rewriting your business with him. Now, his wife, Michelle Fox, is also known as the Trio Alchemist, the former CEO, COO, VP of sales of Fortune 500 companies, a successful entrepreneur with technology and occupational background. And if that's not enough, she's a full-time award-winning bodybuilder. And she's all about creating synergy, synergy from disorder. Welcome, first of all, Dr. Travis. There he is. And here comes hey, Michelle. Wonderful. Welcome to Rock the Stage tonight. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thanks for having us. Uh, that's a, now, you know, I love yeah. that intro. Thank you, by the way. And, you know, I have to say, Rich, thanks for being on the show. And I do want to give a shout out to, to Robert to getting us on the show because Robert did a great job. We've known Robert for a long time. So congratulations. But, you know, every time I hear our resumes read back to us when we do a show, I always go, are, are they talking about us? Is that, is that us? <laughs> I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow. That, that, that sounds like a cool person to me. I'd like, to, oh, oh, that, I guess that's me. So that, that's Well, I had to cut it down. She's better than me. so much that you both have achieved, as we said backstage. I'm like, we could go on for an hour and just reaccolate. So I had to hack that way down to the bare bones. <laughs> well, well she, and, she's and for my dynamic I'm getting back into bodybuilding. So I took a time off for surgery. So I'm now climbing that hill again this year. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. So let, let me first of all ask you, you are husband and wife. You both are in this mind safe business. Are you like, opposite sides of the same corn a little bit? Are you just trying to conquer the world with the two of you together? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, the beautiful part is, is that there's a lot of um, strengths that we both have and we have the traits in order to jump into each other's uh, really role and lane. Um, but we don't need to. And and the beautiful part is, is there are things that, yes, I can do, but Travis is much better at them than I am and vice versa. And so we do complement each other very well, but it's also understanding to let go of the ego and really allow your partner to stay in their lane and trust that they have that lane so you can focus on yours. And that really makes the synergy work and that that two sides to the same coin concept. Well, the first rule of thumb in business is, don't go in business with your best friend or your spouse. So right? what were you thinking? You know, um, for on my part, I, um, I really looked at, okay, I know that I'm an entrepreneur at heart. And if I do not have my family incorporated in what I'm doing as well, I'm never going to see them. It's just not going to happen. And, and I believe that the reason why that rhetoric has been said in the past is because there is so much um, ego and um, frustration that goes into business because we we shift into control or I have to or this is mine. And there's so much possession around it as opposed to how could I not trust my partner? He has the exact same goal in mind for the exact same family. 
why wouldn't it be a phenomenal idea to work with your partner? So Travis, was that something you did wrestle with? Did you guys have a conversation about that whole dynamic of business and life together? Uh, we didn't wrestle at all, actually. Quite the opposite. Yeah. It was, it was uh, <laughs> for me, and, and Michelle and I are identical in the space. We said, look, I, I don't understand. I'm, I come from you know film and television since I was nine years old, and it's a nepotistic community. So being around family was always made sense to me. But what I never understood was, well, why would you want to get married to someone and then spend two thirds of your time away from that person? That makes yes. no sense to me whatsoever. So when Michelle and I um, actually first started dating, we were actually we were doing it. We were doing a turnaround for somebody else as, a, as consultants. And we started looking. I said, you know what I've always wanted and I've always really dreamed of. I said, what if we took an idea, literally an idea for the two of us building an idea from our kitchen table, you know, our hats on backwards, eating a bowl of cereal at midnight going, I got it. I think we finally figured out the golden touch here why wouldn't you want to build it with your partner from the beginning because that's the person you're supposedly going to share whatever your successes are may be when you go from founder funding to fortune and for us it was like yeah that makes total sense <laughs> why wouldn't you want to be together because i don't want to be eight ten hours a day and as an entrepreneur which i've been for 33 years you can go 12 hours a day sometimes 24 for those of you who know what i'm really talking about you know oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden you never see your partner uh that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But then again, you said it very best from the beginning, brother, when you said, hey, the standard rules are, well, I got two words for you. No rules. <laughs> there is no box. No there box. is no box. <laughs> no box. <laughs> Which yeah. has been my model for years and years. Now, there Same. is something that's very interesting. We go deeper into what you both do collectively. But I want to put a pin. I think you have tapped into something that I have long thought. But you're the first person I think of. The, your, your website scream is both of it the way you talk and present everything you do, you've tapped into the sense of the adventure. There is a totally. great adventure, the business, the life, to everything, and you're bringing it all in. And I don't think people do that. No, it was, um, oh gosh, I remember I remember the conversation where uh, Travis and I were in our living room and you know we had robes on, we had markers everywhere, we had sticky notes and the and we're talking big sticky notes. I only oh, yeah. use big sticky notes. Small <laughs> ones are a total waste of time. And yes, exactly like that. So we had these sticky notes and and Travis is like, I don't know how to scale me. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I don't know how to scale you either. And it is, you know, this personal development um, uh, direction that we were currently in um, for Travis's academy. It was self-transformation is um, such a small market, but there's so much um, negative commentation around it. And, and there's so many blocks and barriers. And we looked at each other and we're like, well, you know, starting a business, regardless of what it is, whether that be self-transformation, it is an entire quest all in itself. And if we start from the basics and we got this big sticky note and we started drawing this just horrible, fantastic drawing of every single part of an adventure that a entrepreneur would go through. And so it was the pit of excuses. And I'm sure your mind can go and race and what that means. So we're writing the pit of excuses. We're writing, um, you know, the tomb of treasures and we're writing the selfless siren and the river of reflection and going through every single fundamental um, you know, just wizard kind of checklist of what you encounter as an entrepreneur, but also what is the emotional piece that nobody talks about? Because that's still a part of the adventure. Yes. And it's still so much fun, especially if you will look at it at a different point of view, as opposed to, oh, this is so negative. This is so horrible. This is, I can't believe this is happening to me, as opposed to it is all a part of the freaking quest. Just so change your perception. So let me ask you this. My day starts with every day. It's been this way all my life. Every day is a new adventure. Yes. What am I going to have today? Do you feel that way? Absolutely. Every single, every single day um, in the morning and at night, um, my normal practice is a uh, meditation. And it is going through exactly what's happening for that day and being present in that day. I don't need to think about, you know, five years from now, four years from now, tomorrow. It's what is happening in today? What do I want to, what do, what adventure are we going to go on today? And that's a lot of the dialogue that Travis and I have too. So it's not only personally, but we also do it as a collective couple. Mm -hmm. So Travis, I know you consider yourself 
the trusted guide on that adventure on your side of the coin. So what does that look like? What exactly do you do as that trusted guide? Well, first, let's back. I, I want to dovetail off the back end to answer and a little more. Yeah. About why we chose medieval? Because it's socially accepted over the entire globe. Everybody in the world knows Camelot. They know kings and queens, and we know castles. So everybody, and you can look at what look at content out there in the world over the last, you know, call it decade. We really still are super fascinated with the era. But also, too, we now get to dive into this persona system. And when we dive into the persona system, which is actually how you learn to build your, your company culture, your USP, how do I deal with customer service in a fun way as opposed to well you know that person's this that person's that and we create these labels it's a fluid system and it allowed us to move really easily so that no matter what country we're in and we're in a lot uh it allows us to go okay we're here's the objective see that castle we got to get there here's the things we're going to go through and michelle named a few of them there's actually 27 different quests you can you know, go through and you will but what makes it interesting was a thematic each one of those quests has a theme Right. Because yes. as we go through these concepts, these seem stack each other to become. And I say when we say trusted, the trusted ideology is different. When you look at some of the other broadcast shows as an example out there of, of entrepreneurialism, it's us telling you how great we are and all that we've done. And we're all that in a bag of chips. And if you yes. listen to us, you're going to be like me. Well, I don't want to be like you. Nothing personal. I don't really care. I'm struggling to be in me because there's a whole lot of stuff going on in this head. So I don't need your your stuff, too. So the first thing was. Every one of us, and there's over 40 of us in the company, and each one of us a very specific skill set said, time out. You should have an entire team behind you that's rooting for you. Mm. Our objective is for you. Ours comes from you getting inside the app. That's it. It's, it's a low revenue stream on a volume scale. It's a Netflix model, if you will, or an Amazon model, so everybody can have it. And that became our agenda. And so our tr the trust is we want everybody to win. Because everybody who wins creates more entrepreneurs, creates more jobs, creates more GDP. Everybody starts to turn, but most importantly, and you brought it in best, which I'm so grateful for is, hey kids, you're not getting off the planet alive. So let's go for the adventure of a lifetime and do it all kids. Cause there is no chance for do overs in this big game called life. So whatever your dream is, your vision, and we love the misfit mavericks, the dreamers, the visionaries, the entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, because that's what keeps us going as a globe not just a particular country. And so for us, that's how we came into the concept and, and stepped back and said, we'll give you everything we got because we want you guys to win. We truly do. And we have, when they win, it's emotional for all of us because we go, yeah. we've been through the journey with you. And that, that cauldron, that battleground, that gauntlet that we all go through together. Man, when you're going through it, it's nice to have a team that's going, I got no other agenda except for your win. That's it. That is my agenda. I already won because you're in the quest. That's our win. It. So, so, we so we, before we go any deeper here, and yeah, we'll sure. get back, but Michelle, how many times have you seen Princess Bride? <laughs> oh, geez. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I can count. <laughs> it's inconceivable. It's inconceivable. It's inconceivable. There we go. You know, all I'm hearing is Princess Bride. And to yeah. me, that's the great thing that you've captured. And I'm sure your team's having a blast with you because I'm yes. sure you're all on that adventure together. Yeah. Oh, you have no idea. It's so not only did we think having an app was a really great idea, we yeah. thought having a theme park that correlated with our app was even a better idea. So not only are we playing virtually, we're also playing physically. Right. <laughs> wow. Okay. So right. now back to you, Travis. How are you that guy? What, what do you do from that side to lead them on that great adventure and they navigate it? Yeah, so my role in the and my role in the ultimate business quest is is the architect. So when architect has two different meanings. One is how do you architect this thing that's above your shoulders called your head? Because that's the thing that causes most problems. The second one is how do you architect your culture, which then bleeds into your customer service and how you're dealing with people? Because no matter what business you're in, I don't care what business, product, service, or experience. You're in the people business. So we better learn about the people that are running around in your head and we better learn about the people we deal with every day and the people that our people deal with the, uh, out there because without it, you're not in business. You're, you're never going to be, right? And that's okay if you don't want to be, but if you do, really understanding it, but making it fun because guess what? Going through personality theory is like watching chalk dry twice. It's, this, not, it's painful, man. Ask me how I know. It's painful. But the biggest thing that we've learned over the 30 years of data that Michelle and I have collected working both independently and collectively is when we put people in a theme of fun, 
and we don't generally have to teach anyone how to have fun. It came with your, your space suit. You called your body. You learned it when you were a kid. You may have tried to become an adult and act like you're not fun anymore, but that's because you're trying to be an adult and I've never met one anyways. But if you want to play that as a role, knock yourself out. In the yeah. meantime, everyone has the thematic of fun at the base plate. And if you make it fun, we found two things. One, you'll do it. That's key. But two, you'll learn it at a 10 times faster rate and it actually incorporates into your subconscious. And now we're accelerating your habits and your ability to transform your habits at will as opposed to I've got to wait 90 days and I've got to browbeat my head and, you know, you know grind every day. I'm like, nothing about that sounds like fun. So the whole point yeah. was and, and almost a dichotomous statement. And we do this every day. And it's part of our slogan is make business fun again. And it's yeah. been that way for years, by the way. And it's because business has always been categorized as work. And then yeah. you go have fun on the weekend. Well, that's a, depleti a depletion model. Five to two? No way. How about every day? Because what you said at the top of the show is perfect. Hey, kids, every day is a new adventure. And, and we all know it. Con consciously, we know today's all we really got. But we like to hypnotize ourselves to believe of, nah, come on, Rich. I got, I got a couple of years, man. I'm young. I'm 30. I'm 25. I'm just getting relationship. We got time. No, you don't. Knock no. it off. That's the it's first thing we're going to unwind yeah. right there. Yeah, going to get rid of that quick. We're like, no, you don't. And it's not a sense of urgency or desperation. It's purpose. Purpose, passion, mission, and vision. Then we get into the legacy phase as you get towards the, the exiting part of your company or if you decide that you know, you're going to sell it off or give it to the next generation. All of these were great. And that's how we got here. Well, okay, so Michelle, you're on the other side of that coin because mm -hmm. you're about creating the harmony and the balance. So he's got everyone adventure and juiced up and ready to go have fun. And then you bring back in the other side of you also have that balance in life or you will burn out, right? Oh, absolutely. So um, it's, it's really actually very helpful because Travis has a lot of energy to pull from. Yeah, it's really great for me because I can st take a step back and um, really look at every single person in the company. So every night I, I really do look through every conversation I had, right. every person that's in our company, where are they at emotionally? Um, where are they at in terms of their projects? And do they have enough explanation? Do they have the support that they're needing? And so I go through and really check in with our realm every single day. And I do it per person where Travis is more on the top level and, and um, talking as a totality in a large company meeting and really moving the entire audience where I'm more individualistic. So I go into... Um, what are we doing? What is our plan? What, um, what is our day? What is our week look like? What is our month look like? What is our year? What is our two year? So I look at the micro details and then I give Travis the, Hey, here's, here's where the company vision is. And he takes it into that big macro level so that he's able to really, um, transform that message. So the masses can hear it at a completely different point of view. So that's how Rich, we Rich, what she's trying to say is she's yeah. the boss. Let's just call it what it is. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's just simple. Let me let make this easy for the audience. The <laughs> right, right. I'm out front. I'm out front going dun 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 dun. Once they get inside the tent, I'm like, it's all Michelle. Don't uh, where's Travis? He's out there feeding the elephants or doing something. Who knows? So I I wander off and just talk to trees and but you know, and and it's funny because uh, we have a running joke, and it's probably my only original joke in my life. And I, you know, people say, What is it? I'm like, well, PhD stands for please her daily. <laughs> Pretty you, simple. Yeah, yeah, up, then, um, so you also saw, I mean, there's two other philosophies coming through clearly, right people, right place, right time. You probably always are reevaluating that who's the right people, right place. So the, the machine works well, but it's not the machine. They're in joy. They're in fun because it's the right fit for them and for the whole company. Right? Oh, Absolutely. Culture is number one is when you're when you're really looking for um, the people in your castle, it it stems and starts. And this is what we talk about um, in the quest is your core values. Your core values is the fundamental 100 percent foundation of your castle. And if you're not in complete alignment with that, of the correlation with people coming into your castle, yes. uh, it, it will never work. It will absolutely never work. And that's when you do the firing and it costs more money and it's, 
you can bring snakes in and not necessarily that they're bad people. It's just they have completely different value systems, completely different, um, you know, thought process of where they're taking uh, their particular department. And it is like a cancer or a snake inside the gates. So, Travis, is it OK that I say that I love your wife now? Because <laughs> values are the biggest thing missing in corporations. As long as you download the app, I'm great. You can say you love her all you want. You just got to download the app, right? That's the only price. <laughs> but why don't companies take the values off the wall and live them out like you're talking about? I've been with so many companies. I've coached it myself. Sure. They talk about mission and vision, but the values get dusty on a wall someplace. You know why? Is because um, when, when corporate, I saw this churning, um, I started with a few companies that actually had values and then started really morphing into going to the public sector. And then I've seen companies that have been just uh, as um, corporations. And I saw the shift. What had transpired is that the original founders that created those values started to completely lose sight because they weren't being consciously aware every single day of why they were there, what they were creating, why they were creating it and they would get lost in the minutia and just start grabbing people all the time and say i need the help right now we need to go i i need to make money and they would become frantic and so when you are in that energy and in that mode you start hiring people in that mode so if you've now shifted your values because you are no longer in alignment with your own values when you're having conversations with people and then the big box businesses never even had values to really begin no. with because it was just part of their business plan. They're never living it. And, and people are just cattle in order for the, them to come and do, you know, the time slot and be like, I was here during, and I'm robotic and I am here from eight to five. And it is a total waste of freaking time. <laughs> Having employees doesn't make sense. They're just robots that you bring into your company where it's not, you're not actually talking to them like human beings. No, and even living any kind of values that correlate with anybody in your team. Well, then, well, then we're back to the ball and chain of work again that I said in the open. And no one wants to go to work with that, but they do want to go to work with a cool quest. They'd be, they'd be all over that. Now, let's talk about this app. We, we referred to it a couple of times, and um, I'm going to bring this up right now because your app is central to what you're really doing now. It's the ultimate business app, but it is an adventure app as well. Explain this to me, Travis. Uh, <laughs> well, you want to talk to the boss or you want to talk to, to the architect? Because you're <laughs> well, just talking I want to the talk boss to the architect because oh, I'm okay. sure the architect is you're the guy. So you had to probably tell people how to plan this out. Well, yeah, and, and for fair credit and delivery, I'm w w one of the guides. I just happens to be one of the predominant characters, but I, I want to be crystal clear. This is an ensemble cast, and this is one of my dreams because when I was a talent you know, for 20 years, yeah, I had my crew, but it was still me. And if, if I was out, if I wasn't out front and there was no show, so it became dependent upon me. And I thought that really, that, that just sucks, right? Yeah. It's just not fun. Kind of not lonely. fun for me either, because yeah. I'm only talking to the crew about the crew side, but we can't talk about the show side because they're behind the scenes or what they're doing, you know, sound and lights. This is an ensemble cast of incredible business people in every very specific field from investment bankers to CEOs, to military intelligence, to technology, obviously to, you know, Michelle running with her entire background of multiple exits. So the entire architecture is to start with, hey, let's let's go back in time for 30 seconds. Let's go back. And all of you listening can do this right now. Let's go back in time when you were 15, you know, and you really said, I'm going to go out and conquer the world and who you wanted to be at 15 and who you are now, most likely by percentage. And I mean, a high percentage, <laughs> we're talking 90 percent of our aren't even close to what your original dream was. So then yeah. you get to ask yourself this question. When did I exchange my dreams for work? When did I exchange, you know, this is my vision, my passion, my purpose for hoping, hoping God, my ship comes in, hope to God it works out. And more importantly, when did your time in your quest for whatever it is you seek to quest for, when did that get replaced with, well, I'm just going to go pay the bills and this is good as it gets. So Michelle, what does the app do as, as, as a brand new person beaming in, checking out, where do they go on this adventure? So a UBQ was, is originally designed to help you start your business from the very base core. And even if you have a business, it is absolutely fundamentally crucial to still go through it because um, there is a established business um, that started this app. They went through it four different times and learned how to sell their company because they loved what they were doing, but they wanted to go to their next adventure. 
and they accredit it everything to um, the app of their of their success of being able to actually sell their company, which was really exciting. And what a beautiful, yeah, what a just yeah. an amazing story uh, and success story. And so, um, what this what this fundamentally is is when you first come into the app. You have um, a very interesting path where you use avatars and throughout this avatar process, you are, you can choose your little avatar, you can dress your little avatar, and it takes you through various different ways of learning. So some are videos, some are story, um, storybooks, some are just um, text, some are audios. Uh, some are just visuals. And the reason for that is traditional learning has been a fundamental problem of this is how you're supposed to learn and you can only learn yeah. this way. And it's a linear LMS. And many people, especially ADD, they just can't, especially me. Yeah. I, I just, I can't do traditional schooling. I've never been able to do traditional schooling. So yeah. what we created here is every single area of the entire map, and there's multiple maps, but every single area, there is one theme. So the very first thing that you come in is you're going to learn about the Herald within you because the Herald is the number one most difficult thing to bring out of yourself because, you know, people hate being on video. They hate talking about themselves. They can't talk about their company message. They're embarrassed. I mean, you just name it. So that is the number one thing we first start out with is let's let's pull out that herald that's deep inside you, no matter how uncomfortable it is, because that is the very fu first fundamental. If you can't talk about your business, you should get out of business. And, you know, and even if that doesn't mean that's going to be your your main role of your company, doesn't matter. You, you need to at least be able to speak to it. Otherwise, you cannot even speak to your own values if you can't speak to your own company. And so that's the very first fundamental. So there is every single type of adventure and, and there's twists, there's turns, and it is a fun, um, you know, fantastical map. And the whole objective is every single map you're going through is to uncover every single aspect. So that is, there's no stone left unturned. There's no, you know, tree not touched because you never know. And that's the same thing with business. You never know no. that even though there's a linear path, there might be an offshoot that most uh, that might be the most fundamental, most important piece of information that you need to know for your business. And that is really the adventure of Ultimate Business Quest. And not only while you're in this fun, immersive experience right. within the app, it is by the time you're um, you're done, you have now learned about the personas that you are moving through uh, business. And the reason why that is important so you know who to hire, when you have your values, when you understand your values, and are they the right team members for you so that you don't run into these fundamental problems that kill businesses within the two to three year mark. Let's stop that at the gate by understanding the people that are around us, understanding how we are managing. And it really starts with us is that, yes, we can look at people around us and say, oh, it wasn't the right team or it wasn't this. Actually, it starts with you. So you know, we can just drop the ego and completely look at ourselves in the mirror. Why did this not work because of me? Because I'm the leader. So there's going to be those watching and they're going to say, I don't need a blanket blank game to help me do business better. But you've gamified doing business better. Help exactly. them understand the power of gamifying their own learning curve. Go, yeah. please. Simple. Why'd you play Monopoly as a kid? <laughs> to get the those difference with Monopoly, to right. get those two cards. Yeah, Boardwalk and Park Place, right? That's the one everybody wanted to get hotels on. So when you look at Monopoly as a base plate ideology, right? We've talked yeah. about business and acquiring property and building houses. And these are great metaphors, but they're at large. But the reality check is it doesn't take you into the real world. Ultimate Business Quest starts with a clinical technique called synthesiastic movement, which is a really fancy way of, like Michelle said, we're going to start you in a digital app. One, because everybody's got a device, right? There's yeah. billions on the planet now. So there's no excuse to not get started. Two, because it moves through in multiple different frames of learning, it's going to hit every different aspect for you to absorb the information. And three, we then get you the opportunity, if you want to go down to the path of ambition, to come to the physical side, into the real world, quote unquote, and come to our th our 13 acre theme park where you're going to go through nine different pantheons and you're going to go on the invest. It looks just like the app, only now you're competing for money for your business. Now that's different. You don't get to do that in Monopoly, yeah. but you get to do it the ultimate business quest. So it takes that game that we all love to play as kids. And why shouldn't business be fun? Because somebody said so? Well, okay, well, you can follow that philosophy if you like, but why? 
It makes no sense. But, you know, sometimes we have to help people unhypnotize themselves from stuff that they picked up from other people. And that is, hey, here's the reality check. Business can be fun again. If we can do it, you can do it. The question is, are you ready? It's really simple. So, so you have a real theme park. Real theme yes. park. You have that's, a real yes, that's a five yes. adventure for people to go, where in the world is that located? So if you, uh, um, we have actually documented our entire process so that we are, so true life in, in the flesh, we are taking the UBQ app of everything that we have done and we are following our own blueprints step by step, and we are showing it on YouTube every step by step process. Wow. So, you know, those who say, hey, well, you know, why learn as a game? Hey, if you made it, would you even be listening to this? <laughs> Food for thought. Wow. That's why she's now, the boss. Yeah. But Hey, hang on her, by the way. She, she's the keeper. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that. that, the keeper. yeah that's, it, that's in the bylaws. It's in the paper contract. There, there's no getting out of this one, Rich. I mean, she, it's not happening. There's no way. Not at all. Uh, now, so, I yeah, it's a fun theme park. About, you guys have a passion project, but I love talking about passion projects. You have the All Realms Foundation. It's focusing on sex trafficking victims, autism, and veterans. Congratulations. Correct. You hit the trifecta there. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this because this sounds wonderful. Sure. Michelle, you want that one? You want me one? I'll take that one. You want me? You, yeah, call. Either one. We we can we can it's tag. Like team. I don't care. But this sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the, the, now, you go first, Travis. On, uh, on no, the, I'll, I'll start with the middle and work our way backwards. Perfect. Right? And, then, and then let, and then we'll I'll get, let's end with the crescendo in a perfect show business style. So autism, um, Michelle and I, uh, as, as a family, are both neurotypical parents, but we're also special needs parents. We do have an autistic who is 22 years old, and we've been on the front lines of this since autism really wasn't even really kind of mainstream as it is now with being the number two epidemic in the United States. One in 66 births are now born in the autistic spectrum. Two, let's agree about how many of those have been mislabeled over the last several decades and last half a century into other mm -hmm. categories, and they've been thrown into un horrible situations. But three, this is the next emerging generation that does not have the, the support system that other more well-established um, neurological and physiological disabilities have. So autism is catching up right now. Second, and second is on the veteran side. Our entire family on, on my father's side is all military. Our eldest son is ex-special forces. Um, he currently is now residing in DC. He did four tours. So from a military perspective, I'm not a political guy, so this is not a political statement. I do not like politics. I will be very candid about it. I think it is all a dog and pony show, no matter what side of the aisle you are on, respectfully. However, comma, we live in a world right now, the way the world is set up, that sometimes we need to repel borders. No different than you do in a castle. There's a reason why there's perimeter walls on a castle, and there's the castle, and there's the keep, which is the fallback. So men and women who have graciously put their lives on the line every single day and their families who support them when they're away for a year or two at a time, and they come back and they can't buy a house in this country is absolutely unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. We watched our elder yeah. son go through that very process at the ripe age of whopping 30 years old, who had gone through everything our country had asked him to do. And he's a highly educated man. He's got a master's degree from USC. He's got a law degree from Georgetown. He is a highly educated man and he could barely get a loan for his home. You've yeah. got to be kidding me. That yeah. leads us to the third thing. And that one is all Michelle's. Um, it, we looked at all of these different areas and we have this business app. We have this park. And yeah. we have BYF, which is building materials for, um, you know, safer, faster, greener homes um, that we can put up in, in a fraction of the time. But we have these three key elements. What can we do as a combination mm. of all of these to truly help on a deeper level with each one of these type of organizations, um, uh, those for veterans of, okay, getting into homes or, hey, what about trying to get back into the workplace. So yeah. for traffic victims or for, you know, for veterans that have the PTSD and they do not know how to navigate, um, you know, just normal business meetings. I mean, you, you try to take a sex traffic vic victim that was just pulled out and put her into a board meeting. You are going to have a world of no. like, it's going to be a problem. And no. so no one's addressing the reintegration. So what no. we've done is this, this app can, now overlay into the physical venue where we can actually take 
the um, the veterans and the sex traffic victims and take them through a fun adventure because it doesn't need to be this harsh. Hey, we're going to take you through therapy because that really works. Yeah, um, or, you know, and and take you into this system and put you in a straitjacket and give you some drugs. Yeah, because that's a great great idea. Instead, why don't we bring you to a fun medieval fantastical world where you jump into a different reality but you're able to correlate that with business and it's a fun way of learning it feels safe and now you're looking at trauma from a completely different point of view because it's a business trauma it's not what you've been through in that kind of ptsd and that and that terror those terrible experiences that you had and you were actually looking at the trauma in a different frame of okay this is business it isn't this type of gender of person that hurts you it was that person in the past that did it's not associated with these people that you're working with and it truly allows uh, those individuals to reintegrate into business and actually create something for themselves to know that hey just because you have ptsd it does not mean you are a broken person just because you had these experiences does not mean you can't be a um, famous individual or you can't be a you know um, a billionaire or an entrepreneur it does not mean any of that and all all um, what we have thought of oh you need this massive pedigree is inaccurate it's it's everything that's inside you and hey I would take all day long I would take somebody that has had um, experience on the streets and the hard knocks than somebody that has had the pedigree that walks off that has never had any experience and I have to teach them how to think nope i'm not interested so that's where um the foundation is really um kind of is uh, encompassed all realms foundation again it's focusing on sex trafficking the, the victims of sex tra trafficking mm -hmm. autism and veterans how can they find that just type in the all realms foundation on the web or is there a certain way to find this or what do they have to do it's actually private messaging both travis and i we have um really kept it um kind of in the back burner and, and on the side and just because we have so much going on with the park of we are being very selective of what um nonprofits we're working with and mm. really going through that process because there are so many nice. that yep it it becomes a lot so we are just taking private inquiries at this point well thank you for sharing it through our audience but we we kind of the privilege to share that but that's big stuff and as you both well said integration back in uh, I've, I've worked with the sex trafficking in the past it is a whole can of worms that people don't understand at all and the reintegration is the key but as we go back to that metaphor of storming the castle and having fun and adventure they've been locked in a cell yes. and they have no concept of opening that cell up again Correct. yep yeah. and exactly. the, the, the concept we have spouse to the things we're trying to help them with are so far beyond their reach it's a long walk to walk with them so thank you for being a part of that really Absolutely. seriously that's that's huge thank you. well we're coming down to the end of our time here today and what is the biggest thing you want people to know when it comes to this whole idea of the the mindset the you know building your business building teams and having fun doing it. What's, what's the biggest thing you want people to take away today? Oh, you want me to go first? I'll be Why not? First. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> You're on a roll. I'm enjoying the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, the absolute biggest thing is that um, we limit ourselves and, you know, we, um, just as as a society we look at at things that are new and different and say oh well that's not for me you know i i don't i don't need to do that and how do you know if you've never experienced it yeah. and you know it's um what i truly wish for all of the entrepreneurs all the business owners out there is that hey, can we just collaborate and stop being assholes to each other? I mean, we just work together and have fun because it is so much energy working with the business narcissists, oh, the nice. business vampires of the world, and it makes it really not fun. So it's a very select, small few of you know who to work with and it'd just be so much fun if we just dropped all of that and said, hey, you know, how can we collaborate together? Because guess what? There is enough people on this planet. We don't oh. need to fight for everybody. <laughs> I love that. What do you have to say, Dr. Travis? What she said. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I mean, and dovetailing off it and, and not, not getting too philosophical, but why not? Let's ask the question. What are you waiting yeah. for? Let me really ask the question. I mean, I'll quote the great Alan Watts, right? And that is, death is inevitable, life is a choice. Well, you've been given that gift and you have a choice and you're gonna give me all the excuses. I've heard them all and I've done them all myself. I have kids, I've got bills, I've got this, I've got that. What does that have to do with anything? Because the truth is, none of that, bar raising your kids is going to matter 10 years from now. You don't care about the electric bill and you're not even gonna care about the house. None of those things are interesting to you. So the quest then becomes also, and I think this is often overlooked. And to your comment, and I really wanted to address it, and I, I got sidetracked on, on some other comments, was why would I want to play a game to learn business? Because you've tried it every other way, and look how you turned out. That's why. But more importantly, yeah. let's go to the legacy part, because we haven't talked to the passion, purpose, wow. mission, vision, legacy. The yeah. legacy is you can quest with your kids. What's the value of teaching your kids entrepreneurialism right now? They learn in gameplay. You're setting your kids up to learn business for the rest of their life, which you said you want your kids to be happy. Well, then walk your talk, parent, and start being in a gameplay with your kids. You might learn something yourself. Drop the ego, as Michelle says, as we all do, and come to the ideology of this. You only know two things, Jack and nothing. Everything else is a theory. <laughs> so why not go explore it and explore it in a way that you're teaching your kids entrepreneurialism? Why are they doing math? so they can do a pro forma. Why are they learning to write, read and write? So they can actually write a business plan. But if they can do it in a game, in a game plan, they do it along with you. Tell me what that's worth to you, parents. Is that worth six bucks? If it's not, then I suggest to you that maybe there's a different app you should be looking at, but it's not the quest. But if you're looking to dig that kind of legacy, which we did, our kids are involved in this company. Do not be fooled. Uh, yeah. They are involved every single day in some form or another. Why? We want them to take the journey of life fun. Mm -hmm. That includes your business model, whatever that business model may be. But why not start that younger where you can do it as a family? And let's be honest, if we're all talking about you can't work with your significant others, that means you only a limited amount of time as a family. Wouldn't it make the most sense than to do something as a family in a game that you can all play and you can talk to each other through the app? So throughout the day, even if you're not physically with each other, you can talk to each other in the app and you're questing and you're asking questions. And now instead of going, gee, Rich, how was your day at school, son? <laughs> and the same answer that we gave our parents, it was okay. Did you learn yeah. anything? No. Okay. We've done this model now for a couple of years. What if you ask them to come to a different question from the app? And I think Quest will take you to a whole new play. I know it for a fact because I've seen the 175,000 people go through it. So I know right. now as we get ready to scale this thing up and go to the world, our legacy for us is how can we help 100 million families around the world go through the Quest? Wow. What, what would that be like? Well, I double dog dare you. I double dog dare you. Oh, guess man. What? There's another movie that right got me right there, man. <laughs> I accept the double dog dare you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> right? Dr. Travis, Michelle, this has been amazing on multiple, multiple levels. Thank you. This is a rerun and a rerun of show. Thank you for sharing today. This has been a blast. And look, we got a couple of great movie references in. Right? <laughs> we did. <laughs> Another side, little side quest, right? Little side quest to a movie. Review. <laughs> Thank you That's for awesome. both of being here today. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. Again, the quest, the idea that business is an adventure, the idea that we can have fun. It's not boring. And that last part that Dr. Travis brought up about the legacy of the children. My parents didn't teach me, teach me about business. They sure didn't teach me about being an entrepreneur. What a better way to bring children up so they see the potential within themselves, their own future, and they can step into their own adventure. I love how Dr. Travis landed the plane today. Hey, that's going to do it for this edition of Rock the State Show. We'll be back again next week once again with an ex another exciting conversation. And there might be a couple more movie references. You just never know. So come back and join us at 7 o'clock Eastern time as we go live once again on PPN and on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe, follow along, ask the questions, and be a part of the ongoing conversation each and every week with Rock the State Show. We'll see you next week. 7 p.m. Eastern Time.